guys, Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about the three simple steps to calm down a hyper dog. There really are just three simple things that you can be doing to help calm down your hyper dog. So let's get right into it, guys. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new here, if you've never been to my channel, thank you for being here. If you're a returning subscriber, Thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate each and every one of you. If you are new here, please consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps my channel grow on YouTube and I would very much appreciate you becoming part of the family. So with that, let's get into the three things that you can do to calm down a hyper or overactive dog. If your dog is just bouncing off the walls, crazy, bonkers, maybe waking you up at night, keeping you up late at night, waking you up early in the morning, running around, tearing things up. Maybe they run around in circles outside and come in the house and run around in circles in the house. And they just, maybe you're just pulling your hair out because you don't know what to do. You came to the right place. There really are only three things you need to do to help calm down a hyper dog. And let me tell you, one of them, not any single one of these is medication. We can do a lot of things, not only with ourselves, but with our dogs without reverting to putting chemicals and drugs in our bodies. So I will give you at the end of this video, some tips on some holistic things that you can add in to help calm down a hyper or overactive dog. But let's talk about the three main things that you should be doing with any dog but especially a hyperactive dog. So when I come into somebody's home, I'm a dog trainer. When I come into somebody's home, they're having trouble with their dog. One of the main things I see universally in almost every home I go in is that the dog is not getting enough mental exercise. And what, I mean, this, this encompasses so many things. There are so many different things you can do to help provide your dog mental exercise. And you can get very breed specific about the things you're doing. So if you have a dog and you know that, say you have a terrier, like a fox terrier, and you know that they were bred to dig and pull foxes out of holes, then you can harness that built into your dog that they want to hunt and dig. And you can use that to build a, a dig box in your backyard so that they have something to dig and something to do. You can bury things in the dig box for your dog to uncover, like little rewards for your dog for digging in the right spots, in the appropriate spots in your backyard, which would be a dig pit that you create for your dog. Um, you can use recycling and cardboard to build things and make obstacles and little puzzles to hide treats and food in so that your dog has to actually go through and root around and sniff around to get their food. That's another way to provide them mental exercise. The, the limit to what you can provide to your dog for mental exercise, and sometimes we call it enrichment, is only limited by your imagination. So get creative, find really fun, awesome things to do with your dog. You can literally just take, you know, paper towel uh, or paper towel or toilet paper rolls and fill them with yummy treats or food and fold in the sides and hide them in places around your house so your dog goes around and finds them and opens them up to get their food or treats. So, so many wonderful things that you can do with your dog to help provide mental enrichment. When you work your brain, when your dog works their brain, it is the quickest way to wear them out. So the number one thing you can do is provide mental enrichment for your dog. The second thing you can do is provide physical exercise for your dog. That's, this is this, the second thing I see people doing. You know, they may take their dog for a walk once or twice a day, but they're really not challenging their dog. They're really not providing them with enough physical exercise. You know, every dog is gonna be different in the amount of physical exercise they want and need, but we need to figure out what it is our dogs need and make sure we are meeting at least the minimum requirements for the physical exercise they need. Your dog may love to go and run around at a park or in your backyard for 30 minutes or an hour. Your dog may love to swim. Your dog may love doing agility. Your dog may love doing barn hunts or um, so many different things. So there are so many different activities that you can provide for your dog to get them that physical exercise that they need. Play frisbee with them, play tug with them, throw the ball with them. Every day your dog needs 
physical exercise. And the third thing you can do for a hyper or overactive dog is to train with them. Positive reinforcement training is going to provide so much wonderfulness for your dog. Your dog is going to get to learn things and use their brain. And by the way, training is a win-win situation. Your dog learns something new and then you get a behavior you want out of your dog. So it really is a win-win situation. So train, use positive reinforcement to train different things with your dog. You can train a sport. You can train, you can just start training basic behavior cues like sit and stay. And um, you can train fun things like a rollover or a handshake. Another really important thing, especially for hyperactive or overactive dogs is to train impulse control. There's a lot of impulse control training inside of my online course. It is all positive reinforcement. If you're interested in that, do check the description below and train with your dog. All right, guys, so we got to the end of this video and I told you at the end, I would provide you with some um, more holistic items that you could actually integrate into your routine with your dog. One thing I really love is from Animalio. They have a blend called Calmamile. And the reason that I recommend Animalio is because it is veterinary grade essential oils. It is developed and tested by an integrative veterinarian, Dr. Melissa Shelton. I completely trust that these oils are 100% safe for all of the animals in my home, human, canine, feline, all kinds of animals. These essential oils are safe for. And Calmamile is a particularly wonderful blend because it helps to bring calm. So that's one thing that you can add in to your routine with your dog. You can also add in things like CBD treats. Now, I will say when you're sourcing CBD for your dog, you want to be very, very particular about what you buy. You don't want to buy just anything because it says it is for dogs. It doesn't mean that it has been tested and that it is safe. So one company that I really love is CBD Dog Health, and I will put a link in the description below. I am not affiliated with them. I don't make any money off of this. Um, same with Animalio. I don't make any money off of, of these particular links. They're just products that I actually love and recommend. And another thing that you can try are yogurts. Uh, sheep milk treats. Sheep milk is known to have calming properties in the body. So there are a line of treats by Yogurts, and I will also put a, a link in the description below that you can try and see if they help your dog uh, to calm down. I have read wonderful reviews from lots of different people about how these treats have helped their dogs stay calm in situations where otherwise they may not be calm. For instance, if a thunderstorm is coming. So that's going to wrap it up this video for you guys. Thank you so much again for being here. And if at any point you like the content of this video, please give it a thumbs up and please do consider subscribing and helping my channel grow. I really appreciate each and every one of you, every view I get on every Every video. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.